The Packers are officially NFC North champions again after their nail-biter of a win against the Ravens. We'll recap that game and discuss the playoff picture for the Green and Gold before we preview our Christmas Day matchup against the Browns. All this, plus plenty of listener feedback coming up next on your Packers Fan Podcast. Go Pack Go, and Merry Christmas to you and yours. I'm Wayne Henderson from MediaVoiceOvers.com, and if the Packers keep playing opponents this closely, I'm going to need a fresh supply of paper bags to breathe into during the fourth quarter. (laughs) And I'm Scott Clark from the Gaming Outsider, and I'm with you, Wayne. We definitely have quite a few things to fix as we head closer to playoff season, but I'll still take the win, especially after some help from the Lions and Saints this week. It's episode 244 of your Packers Fan Podcast, and Wayne and I will go over what we loved and maybe didn't from the win over the Ravens, and we'll share your excellent listener feedback as well. And then it is time we will preview this week's Christmas Day Browns at Packers matchup, and what will it take for the Packers to win this one? Scott's got his keys to a Packers victory coming up just a bit later. Well, let's go ahead and kick things off with some highlights from this past weekend's game. Uh, Yes, like I mentioned at the top of the show, the Packers are NFC North champs. We are actually the first team in the NFL to clinch a divisional title because that's just how tight the divisions are right now. It's kind of crazy. And uh, not for nothing, but this is the third straight season that the Packers have done this all under Coach LaFleur. So kudos to that guy. How has he not gotten coach of the year or rookie coach of the year or anything like that. It's just crazy to me. I don't understand at all. If he doesn't get it this year, the whole thing's a sham. I tell you, right? a sham. <laughs> Another great highlight was the record setting that was happening on the field during the day. Devontae Adams got his touchdown to make it 14-14 uh, to 14 right before the half, which broke Jordy Nelson's 65 touchdown passes And that's all time. So Devontae Adams, all time Packers receiving touchdown passes. Uh, That's not too shabby because he's just now getting close to his prime. Yeah, exactly. I mean, (laughs) uh, who knows if he's going to be with the Packers next season? You know, fingers crossed. Come on. Uh, I I mean, dude, I don't want to be the pessimistic one here, but, uh, you know, stranger things have happened. So yeah. we'll, we'll have to see for sure. But I, I mean, I just love to see. I, I love Jordy Nelson. Don't get me wrong. Jordy Nelson was, was a stellar player and he was so much fun to watch. Uh, but I, I, I love seeing these kinds of records get broken and I uh, hope he's going to extend that, obviously, the rest of the season. So, Well, Aaron Rodgers broke a record. Well, basically, he tied a record at this point uh, with mm-hmm. MVS getting the touchdown pass reception, which got Aaron Rodgers tied with Brett Favre. For the most touchdown passes in Packers history, 442 touchdown passes, that's not too shabby. That's pretty impressive. To do anything and on par with Brett Favre is pretty solid. And again, Aaron Rodgers is more than likely going to surpass that. (laughs) We'll be shocked if he doesn't. So the fact that he's going to be number one is going to be pretty fantastic. Kind of interesting fact about uh, that that ball, Uh, MVS is the one that caught it. And he's actually keeping that ball for himself. He said he would have let Rodgers have it if he had actually broken the record, but since he caught that one, it was something special to him, so he's keeping it. What do you think? You think he should have he, – he's okay hanging on to that one, or does he owe that one to Rodgers as well? I think it's fair enough for uh, Marquez to hang on to that ball. All right, but 443 better come back to AR-12. Oh, on Christmas Day, it's going to mm-hmm. happen, and he will what get that ball. Oh, absolutely. Was that uh, touchdown pass to MVS, was that the one where he was kind of holding himself up with one arm as he leaned into the end zone and but kept his knees off the ground? I believe so, yeah. And it was a, I honestly thought it was going to get challenged because it was, it was so close. But after the replay, you saw a better shot of it, and he was clearly in. So it was a, it was a good catch. Uh, also, our running game continues to impress. Aaron Jones had 15 touches, 70 total yards. He actually uh, uh, got a little bit more action than AJ Dillon this week. I mean, we didn't. There was not a whole lot of explosion coming from from AJ Dillon. He did more of a, a setups for scores, but uh, I mean, he did get a score as well. But um, Aaron Jones, though, his touchdown reception gave the Packers their first lead of the game in the third quarter, which was awesome. Uh, I'm sorry, A.J. Dillon did not get in the end zone. I misspoke. Uh, but he still averaged around five yards per carry and set up 
all those scores. I mean, he, he, I don't know why the Packers wait until third quarter to really utilize that running game the way that they do, but uh, it's it, it obviously works. And I wish that they would do that for all four quarters instead of just uh, the third and the fourth. It's kind of frustrating. Uh, also, uh, A.J. Dillon uh, recovered Baltimore's onside kick attempt, which uh, which was really cool to see because that was, you know, it, it could have been disastrous for us if that had gotten recovered and he fell on the ball. So I saw that. And at that moment, I was like, A.J. Dillon, what's he doing out there? But apparently he's got some of the best hands on the team. So put him in there. Yeah. Um, also, we had some pretty impressive defensive stops, especially on fourth down. We stopped them on fourth and goal from the three. You know, Baltimore went for it on fourth and goal on the three, and we stopped them. That was huge. Uh, we also stopped them on fourth and six when they were going for it on their own 29-yard line. That was insane. That was that was insane. Uh, it, it was a crazy play call. It obviously didn't turn out for them, but... Uh, to their credit, they did stop us from getting the end zone on that drive and uh, held us to a field goal only, which was a bummer for us because uh, man, that would have that would have been four forty three. That pass to um, uh, oh man, was it Lazard over in the corner that just was just a little bit a little bit out of reach. I think so. Uh, but but the big one for sure was I know it wasn't fourth down, but how about preventing a two point conversion to win the game? Oh, that was, I was on the edge of my seat. Just, I, I was, all I was calculating in my head was 42 seconds. Can Rodgers get the ball down the field in 42 seconds to score a field goal or not? And thankfully it didn't have to happen. So, uh, and then that's the second week in a row that Baltimore tried to do that and they failed to convert. Wah, wah. Yeah. yeah. The two point conversion potentially could have won them in the game because in addition to 42 seconds or something like that, we did have two timeouts, I do believe. And yeah, th- there's no guarantees that we would not have just marched down the field. Mason Crosby saved the day, but we didn't even have to go into that. So we yeah. had that going for us. And oh my goodness, it was great to see Mercedes Lewis with one of his longest runs of the year. He did a couple of other great things in the game as well. I was mm-hmm. so rooting for him to get into the end zone. He didn't quite make it, but wow. He he still got it, absolutely. And it's just, I mean, I I know I I it's easy for me to say this because I do the show with you every week, Wayne. But it's it's crazy that I recognize so many players. Back when I was just a fan and I wasn't doing a podcast about Packers, I recognized the big names. But now I'm actually recognizing um, more players on the on the offense, especially. And it's not just because of the show, but because they're the ball is getting to them so often. He's got so many targets. It feels like he gets more and more targets every year, and he's hitting all of them. Obviously, Devontae is his favorite. Right. He's going to, that's kind of his first look because he trusts the guy more than anybody else. But um, seeing him spread the ball out is just, is, is a big reason why he's so successful. And uh, it's a lot of fun to see. And speaking of names <laughs> that we don't recognize, we got to get to the low lights. Um, and the and the big elephant in the room once again is special teams. And the reason I say names we don't recognize is I don't I did not know this player. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, is it Yayadum? Yayadum? I don't, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Um, when we uh, we punted, Baltimore called for fair catch, and this guy uh, got a penalty for fair catch interference. I mean, I don't even. I sat there and I watched that. I'm like, how do you do that? How do you like? Are we are we in the peewees? Like that's like just <laughs> standard. Oh, it just made me so angry. Um, on top of that, that, we had a holding penalty that prevented a decent return. We finally got a decent return. Got it called back because of a holding call. We had a muff kickoff that thankfully we recovered. Fell on it, but it, it it pinned us back so much farther. I just don't understand why we're not kicking it out of the end zone. I understand I'm not a kicker, and I know it's probably a lot more difficult to kick it out of the end zone. But I feel like most games that I watch, even when it's not Green Bay, whoever is kicking off is always kicking it into the end zone or or past the end zone. Right. And it seems like every time we do it, we're we're kicking it off inside the five yard line, where they either have to run it back. Or, you know, they have a choice to run it back. I, I just, we got to stop giving them the chance to, to run it back. Just kick it out, let them start at the 25 and be done with it. I think I saw somebody post in our Packers Fan Podcast Facebook group that we we should just get out of the way, never try to catch the ball, don't get anywhere near it on punts or kickoffs, just let the ball do what it's going to do. And if the other team downs it at the one-yard line, that's still better than all these other heart attack plays. 
And yeah. speaking of special teams, I mean, really, we got a delay of game waiting for the ball to be snapped on a punt. Yeah. And it was on a punt when we were already backed up almost into the end zone and we made it even worse for ourselves. And uh, speaking of kicking, why on earth did we not go for it on fourth down about midway through the fourth quarter when we could have given the Ravens the dagger with a field goal? I didn't even get to use the term dagger the whole day. I mean, (laughs) it was nice to see Mason Crosby make the field goal, which was good. He's back on track. But, you know, a touchdown could have been the dagger. Yeah, I had I actually said in our uh, Facebook chat I used the word dagger uh, on a play and it was a little too early to be to be saying that. I thought it was pretty much a sewn up deal, but Baltimore definitely rallied and I got nervous. This was a nail biter of a di- of a game for sure. Yeah. Uh, also, we just could not uh contain Hundley at all. Uh this was only his second start with the Ravens, and yet we were still we still allowed him to get 28 out of 40. Uh, completions, 215 pass yards, two touchdown passes, and two rushing uh, touchdowns. I I mean, he did just as well as Lamar Jackson would have done. And it was kind of sickening to watch because uh, I I don't know why we, we, were we complacent? Were we overconfident thinking that we're just going to steamroll these guys? I don't know what it is. Or did we really, really, really miss Kenny Clark? That too. Kenny Clark was out with COVID, and I didn't even we we got those new that news like what two or three days before the game. What right. a huge blow! Uh, hopefully he'll be back on Christmas Day for uh, hopefully a lot of people. Where's Bakhtiari? I don't know what the deal is. What is happening there? I feel like every single week the announcers are even saying, "Well, he should be back next week or whatever." I'm like, "Yeah, you say that every week." <laughs> I don't think you know. I think you're just hoping <laughs> that he is. So yeah, and at this point, I am hoping. I mean, are we just? Saving him for the playoffs? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. He must have been a lot more injured than we thought he was. Yeah, so we're just, you know, in the end, if we're raising the Lombardi trophy in a couple of months, it'll all make sense to us. But I don't know what was up with our defense not being able to cover Ravens tight end Mark Andrews, number 89, at all. He was close to being the only receiver on the team. Yeah ever getting a catch and we still could not stop him like at what point do you just double team i know it's weird to double team a tight end but if he's the only guy catching the ball exactly didn't that drive you crazy it did it was like he just kept saying his name and it got to the point where i didn't even need to look at his number or see his the name on the back of his jersey i could just tell it was him from the size right and the fact that that you know he he was the only one catching the ball (laughs) yeah if, if it was caught it was andrews uh, he's gonna be a he's gonna be a, a top tier tight end next season if, in terms of fantasy football. He's had a fantastic season. Yeah, keep an eye on him next year for fantasy for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, listeners, we love you. We love hearing from you, and we've got a voicemail which makes it possible for us to hear from you and hear your dulcet tones and all that good stuff. Give us a call right after the game on Christmas Day at nine two zero three pack go again nine two zero three pack go. Or you can even send your voice message regarding the game to feedback at PackersFanPodcast.com to be part of the show next week after the Browns game. The sooner the better. You know, right after the game is nice, but I know it's Christmas and you do have an extra day because we don't record till Mondays. But please get that feedback in no later than 9 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. And we'll make sure that it is part of the show next week. Let's see who called in this week. Go, Pat, go! What up, guys? Jared in Colorado. Um, 31 to 30. Man, you want to talk about a heart attack pack game? Uh, this was it. Um, it's just, it, you know what? It was a win. I, I, I'm not going to uh, dwell too much on the negatives. Um, all in all, I mean, the, the Packers did what they've kind of done uh, pretty much throughout the season. A little bit of slow start, followed by a pretty explosive um, offensive poor mate, uh, per- performance. Uh, for throughout the game, minus some, uh, you know, some, some, some crappy duds of, of, of drives. Um, the defense definitely, um, was looking for a lot more of the turnover generation that they've done a really good job at, um, for the most part throughout the season. Unfortunately, didn't see that. And, and if anything, it was not too great, uh, watching the defense make a backup quarterback look like a superstar. So 
Um, but all in all, hey man, a win's a win. Really happy to see the Packers get the win. They clinch the NFC North to control that division once again. And with the Cardinals losing to the Lions, to the Lions! Can you believe really that? They lost to the Lions! Uh, anyways, uh, nice wiggle room for the Packers, um, in terms of holding on to the number one seed. So, yeah, all in all, loving that. And, uh, as far as special teams go, look, uh, just fire Maurice Drayson, Drayton. Just, just fire him. Like I, I'm not expecting a, an interim guy to, to, to really light anything on fire. But uh, it's it, number one of two things. Uh, one, they, I, I don't see them getting any worse uh, by making a change like that. However, I feel like I've said that a lot with special teams, and they keep getting worse. But number two, it, it sends a clear message that uh, that type of coaching is just not going to be tolerated. That was one of the faults of McCarthy is he, he held on to guys for too long and I feel like it set a culture of, hey, you can be bad at your coaching job, but don't worry, you'll still have a job. Uh, so I think that's uh, important for LaFleur to not let that type of thing um, set in. But who knows? I don't know. I'm just an armchair coach slash quarterback slash whatever fan. So all in all, green and gold to the dead and cold. Loving the win. Let's uh, let's win on Christmas Day. Let's give the Packers fan a pretty awesome Christmas present to beating the Browns at home at Lambeau. So, uh, especially since they will be on quite the short week, uh, Browns wise, uh, given their rescheduled game. So, all right, go Pack, go. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Thanks so much, Jared, for your voicemail. We, as always, appreciate that. Uh, so just some things I want to comment on what he said. First off, special teams. We're going to talk about that. In a little bit, that's going to be our, it was our question of the week or our poll for, uh, in our Packers fan community. So I'm going to hold off my comments there. But he talked about how the Lions beat uh, the Cardinals this week, which obviously was very good for us. Uh, it helped us solidify our number one seed, uh, in the NFC. But uh, it also makes me a little bit nervous, man, uh, because we still have to play the Lions this season. Uh, you know, I'm, it just, it just sounds like a trap game for me because it's going to be a division title and Detroit would like nothing more than to hurt our chances. Uh, and, uh, so I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm officially nervous about that game. Oh, but, okay. Uh, <laughs> I just want to no. interject. Sorry to interrupt. I'm not nervous about that game at this point because we do have the buffer and that could be, since it's the last game of the year, that could be the week that, uh, we rest almost everybody. And right. Jordan Love really gets a great start, and maybe he'll beat the Lions for us. But nervous? I don't know if that's the term I would use for that game, as long as we win the next two. Well, yeah. I mean, that's we'll have to wait and see, dude. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying that we lost to the Vikings. We lost to, you know, we've, we've made a lot of mistakes. We got a lot of things to clean up, and um, you know, hopefully, it is like you said, a time for us to rest our players. But uh, we'll have to see what's going to happen there. Uh, yeah, he also said that he was hoping that our defense could get some more turnovers. I kept, I was watching the game with my father-in-law as well as my mother-in-law and wife. And, uh, we kept saying, where's the, where's the interceptions? Where's the, the forced fumbles? Uh, we just weren't getting any, it, the coverage was, was decent, but, uh, except for on Andrews, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we kept waiting for that, that turnover action to happen. Hopefully we'll get some more of that against the Browns. And he brought up a good point too, about the Browns. Uh, since the Browns game was moved from Saturday to Monday, they now have two days less of rest when they when they face us on Saturday. So they've really only got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They got five days of rest. It's almost like coming off of a or you know going into a bye week or whatever where you got to play on Thursday. Uh, so that really could be in our favor, uh, especially with the uh, with the situation going on in Cleveland right now. But we'll get to that in my keys to victory in a little bit. More, more on that later, but Jared, that was a great uh, point about, I don't see special teams getting any worse if we had an interim coach. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, could you imagine worse? Whoa. So Jared, great to hear from you. And folks, yes, we want to hear from you after the uh, Browns game this week. 9203-PAC-GO. And like you alluded to, Scott, it's time for our weekly poll that is in our Facebook group at PackersCommunity.com, as well as on Twitter, at PackersFamPod. Do you really think that firing our special teams coach at this point of the season will do any good? Yes or no? Easy peasy. I'm going to say no. Uh, I understand that things are, are really shaky right now, but it is just way too late in the season to be trying to try something new. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, 
it's the players that are the problem. I understand that the coaching has something to do with it, but you get rid of the of the coach, the the players are still there. I don't know what what it's like in the locker room or on the practice field. Maybe there's a lack of respect with this with, with this coach. Um, I don't I don't really follow that that closely. But we're winning games. You know what I mean? If we had lost a game because of special teams, that'd be one thing, and maybe we could have the conversation. But we're winning games. Granted, we're only playing the second half of games. Um, I think that's <laughs> well, I think that I think that's the, the the bigger concern right now. I mean, don't get me wrong; special teams is the worst. I feel like it's it's ever been, uh, at least while I've been watching football. It's uh, so I'm going to say no. How about you? So, are you saying that the Packers have not heeded your keys to victory? I know at least three or four times this season you've mentioned that they need to play four quarters of football. Yeah. And uh, they're not going to say it again this week. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Spoilers. Sorry. Didn't yeah. Um, I'm going to go with no as well because it's so late in the season. And I don't know. I know uh, Jared's voicemail said it would send a message, which would be a good thing. But I just think we need to steady the course and see what happens. I, I mean, granted, I would love it if all phases of our team were totally on fire. We were blowing people out by 30 or more points every single week. But I'll take those wins. We've lost three games. One of those was almost assuredly because Aaron Rodgers wasn't there because of COVID. But, uh, you know, we're going to go from there. And the votes that came in are pretty split as well. 59% after combining Twitter and Facebook said, no, don't fire him at this point. But 41% said yes. Yeah, I think a lot of people are very, very frustrated because each week we kind of tell ourselves, uh, it, it's going to be better this week. It can't be as bad as last week, and then it gets worse, <laughs> or at least it feels worse. So I, I understand the frustration, but I just think it doesn't make any sense. You, you can't reboot special teams in that short amount of time. Yeah, and I'm not going to say it's necessarily because of this, but keep in mind this game in particular, you know, without Kenny Clark, was on the road in Baltimore. It was cold. It's a very tough stadium to play in. The next two games are both at Lambeau Field, and the final game of the year is indoors in Detroit. So take that little part of it out of it. Now, of course, the players need to do better as well. But uh, what kind of uh, comments did the listeners have based on that poll? Well, let's go ahead and kick things off with our first comment that came from Dictus in the Netherlands. He said, I voted yes but I have no plan, just a ton of frustration. I don't really think another coach will magically fix this. Then again, can't do worse, so I'd be willing to try anything at this point. Comes down to what uh, MLF thinks is best. That's my Coach LaFleur. <laughs> I've never seen it done to MLF before. Uh, thinks is best for the team. I trust he'll make the right decision, even though the decision is probably not his to make, but you get my drift. Also, Dan Dyler says, at this point, a cardboard cutout of an orange would be better than what we have now. <laughs> Week in and out, we have seen the play of special teams nearly cost this team the game. And what's concerning is the coaches, and specifically Lafleur, appear to be unconcerned. From the outside looking in, I love him, but let's be honest, he's not addressed the horrible special teams play at all. That's kind of a good point. I would like to see some uh, journalists ask him about that. <laughs> yeah, I think that could get a little heated, but now may be the time. And uh, Garrett commented, Replacing Maurice Drayton now would only be promoting an internal coach that solves nothing. I think their mentality is to not give up. It would be admitting a weakness, and we're not going to do that. I'm just surprised that every week they find a new way to play terrible. Yeah. Every week. It has to stop. Peter Allison says the team needs to decide what the cause is because it seems to me we're cursed we're taking all hands on deck for an approach and nothing is changing if that's the case i can't see how it isn't coaching but that's why i think it's a curse because the ones aren't doing anything either <laughs> yeah very good call and uh, peter jones reminds us to quote look beyond the coaching that's kind of what i was saying it's at the end of the day it's the players that are messing up uh, you know, the leadership is obviously responsible for it, but the, the players need to step up as well. Ryan on Twitter says, it's execution. The Yaitam, again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, the Yaitam penalty is proof positive. You have to let the returner catch the ball. Uh, that's just fundamental football. That's just how you how you play the game. That is what they teach peewee kids and high school kids. You have to let them catch the ball. <laughs> 
I, I just it almost looked like he had tried to tackle him. He didn't even like try to get out of the way. He just like shoulder checked him in a way that appeared to be intentional and that you just don't you can't do that in the NFL especially. It just kind of drove me crazy. I was throwing my hands up in the air at that point. Uh, we had some other great posts and comments unrelated to the poll question that were made in the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community group, which you guys can find at PackersCommunity.com. Dan Dyler shared a mic'd up video clip of Coach LaFleur showing how he celebrates the player and not himself. He definitely is a special special coach. Check that video out. It really does kind of showcase LaFleur, LaFleur being a manager of, of a, a, a team and not like the guy in charge. It's just really cool to see. Uh, also, Caleb and Jesse both shared screenshots of some of their Madden game achievements when playing as the Packers. Uh, I think Caleb especially was playing against the the, the uh, Ravens, and I think it was it was like in the fifties to the teens or something like that. It was a really it was a really uh, qu- quite a quite a lead he had on there. Unfortunately, we didn't get that big of a lead, but it was a uh, it was fun to see. Yeah, those were impressive scores, which gives me an idea that if I do end up. Losing the wager of fun this season and playing Madden against you, I just need to play as the Packers, and uh, maybe that's the secret. There you go, and I got to play as the Lions? Y- yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, Dan Dyler also posted, so I started a project yesterday, 3,447 puzzle pieces and a 104-page instruction manual. They're kind of like little Legos. Uh, He says uh, some of the pieces are as small as, well, take a look at this picture. It barely fits on his fingertip. In fact, Scott, when I saw Dan's photo, I thought, wow, that's a big drop of blood on your finger. But no, that's one of the pieces to this (laughs) puzzle thing. The goal is to finish it by the time we hoist the Lombardi trophy. And for those that haven't seen it, it's basically a 3D model of Lambeau Field. Right. Right, that he that he has got to put together a hundred and four page instruction manual. Why do you need Ooh. an instruction manual? That scares me. Just hearing about that part. <laughs> oh man, it looks really cool though. I can't wait to see the finished product once you've got it all done, Dan. That'll be that'll be really cool. Yeah. By uh, NFC Championship game time, uh, we're hoping to see the photos. So be sure to join the Facebook group. Be part of the conversations. Let your voice be heard. PackersCommunity.com. Moving on, let's talk about some emails. We got an email that says, Hey, Wayne and Scott, this is Caleb Fisher from Green Bay, Wisconsin. What a great game, even though it was the heart attack Packers. We also say congratulations to Aaron Rodgers, tying Brett Favre with touchdowns. Great birthday present for me with the NFC North Championship. Go Pack Go, bleed green and gold till dead and cold. Thank you so much. And uh, happy birthday, man. Really happy birthday. That's uh, what a great, what a great uh, cri- uh, birthday gift to get at NFC Championship. As always, your calls, emails, comments, and support are so much a part of the Packers Fan Podcast. Thank you for everything that you guys do to contribute. It really makes this uh, doing this show a ton of fun. Remember that you too can join the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community. Be part of that conversation over at PackersCommunity.com. And now, your number one seeded NFC North champion, 11-3 Green Bay Packers are, as the song says, home for the holidays to host the 7-7 seven and seven Cleveland Browns because they just lost. They let the Raiders march down the field and get a field goal as time ran out. So uh, we are hosting the Cleveland Browns at 3.30 p.m. Central Time, Christmas Day, which, in case you've lost track, it's Saturday, December 25th. The uh, Packers lead the series 13-7, to seven, and per Wikipedia, the Cleveland Browns formed in 1944 when taxi cab magnet Arthur B. Mickey McBride got a Cleveland, Ohio franchise for the newly formed All-America Football Conference. Paul Brown was the team's namesake and the first coach. And from the beginning of play in 1946, the Cleveland Municipal Stadium, the Browns were a great success. Cleveland won each of the AAFC's four championship games before the league dissolved in 1949. Uh, The team then moved to the NFL, where it continued to dominate. And do you think it's because, Scott, that they won all four of the championship games? The league said, okay, the, the Browns are too good. The rest of you guys stink. We're just dissolving. <laughs> well, they had to get rid of I mean, you'd think if they moved them onto the NFL, it would like even the playing field up for the for that, oh, <laughs> that or, conference. But. Or maybe just the Cleveland Browns were what was keeping that league alive. Yeah. And so once they were in the NFL, between 1950 and 1955, the Browns reached the NFL championship game every year and winning it three times. The Packers and Browns only met three times during those 50s. 
Uh, unfortunately, the Browns dominated us as well, winning all three games by a combined score of 92 to 17. Yikes. Yeah, the 50s were definitely the worst decade for Packers in Packers history. Well, <laughs> they the, did not do well during the 50s. The 70s weren't all that much better, but we're, yeah. we're on a roll now. That's what counts because the Browns later faced the Lombardi Packers in the 65 NFL title game at Lambeau Field. Packers won 23 to 12. And, you know, that could be looked at as one of the pivot points for the Browns' domination to end and the Lombardi Packers' rise to legendary status. Absolutely. And I got a fun fact for you as well, Wayne. Uh, the Packers beat the Browns in 1967's regular season game 55-7, uh, to seven, which was awesome. And uh, that was the same year that the Packers won Super Bowl II. And in fact, it was uh, one of the reasons it was such a high-scoring game is Travis Williams returned two kickoffs for touchdowns, one for 87 yards and one for 85 yards, respectfully. I thought that was kind of a fun fact, but uh, it's crazy to think of a, of a kickoff only being 87 and 85 yards. I feel like whenever we have a, a kick a kickoff return for touchdown, it's always at like 104 yards. Right. Or, you know, the, the record is 109. So, um, you know, things have certainly changed in the, in the decades it's been since then. Well, here's a question about your fun fact. Mm -hmm. uh, what's Travis Williams, if he's still alive, do you think he's available? Because we could sure use that kind of uh, help on special teams right now. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I I could find out, but uh, I don't I don't think but, that uh, he would be in shape in game oh, shape. But Travis, we appreciate your service to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, mm -hmm. This Saturday afternoon's weather at Lambeau Field has the potential to be foggy but festive. Twenty eight deg twenty eight degrees Fahrenheit at kickoff, which is minus two degrees Celsius. So every week when I mention how cold it is, you tell me, Scott, that uh, that's not cold. So are that's we not cold. are we getting into cold yet? You're, you're you're barely below freezing at that point, man. It's just it's just slightly below freezing. You, you got a long way to go to be real, really cold. Okay, okay. <laughs> One of these years, we're gonna go to Lambo together, and, and it's gonna uh, be gonna cold. Go to, it's gonna be cold, and we're gonna and we're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna teach you how to do layers. Uh, we're gonna you know pack you fill you full of hot chocolate. I was thinking we should focus more on maybe a game in late October, early November. <laughs> no, you got to have the full experience, man. Like, come on. Come on. Okay. You know okay. you want to be out here in playoff season. Well, what's it going to take to beat the Browns? Well, a lot of things, but I narrowed it down to three things specifically. First off, I'm going to say we're going to need to take advantage of the COVID situation. Now, look, I will never cheer for any player on any team to come down with an illness for the sake of a football game. I want to be clear. And I sincerely wish that everyone has a speedy recovery. I think the Browns this week have 20 players out on COVID. That's, that's awful. Uh, with that said... The Browns did have an outbreak this past week that pushed their game back to tonight. They're actually playing it as we speak right now. Just wrapped and, up. But they're playing with their – the whole game wrapped up? Yeah. Oh, they, I thought that was – No, the game is over. Uh, the oh, okay. Browns let the Raiders march down the field and win the game. Ah, okay. Well, there you go. So they're going to be on fire next week. But uh, – they're, they're playing. They played tonight with their third string quarterback. I did not watch the game because we were recording here, so I can't really see how that quarterback did. But um, regardless of whether or not Baker Mayfield, their their normal starter, will be at one hundred percent, the Packers need to jump on this opportunity as they are considerably more healthy at this present moment. Who knows what's going to happen in a week? Right? We are not a week now; it's five days. Um, but uh, there's there's no room for overconfidence either. Uh, if if we've ever had an opportunity to dominate, this is the week. So don't rest on your laurels and come out of the gate swinging. It's just that's just the way it is. There's going to be no excuse to not dominate this week. So dominate, dominate, dominate. Secondly, we got to stop relying on the deep ball. Too many times this week and previous weeks, Rodgers constantly looks for early points. They seem to be avoiding fundamental football until the third quarter regularly, and that just needs to change. Look at this week. We started winning when they started taking 10 yards at a time, running the ball more often and only going long when the opportunity was more than certain. That is how we're going to win games in the end of the, near the end of the season and postseason, and it just has to start happening in the first quarter, not the third. And lastly, special teams. Yes, it's a repeat, and yes, it's an obvious call, but I'm, I, I'm asking and begging the special teams to step up this week. Kick the ball out of the end zone, secure catches, and use your head when it comes to stupid penalties. If we can get that and our first half performance repaired, nothing will stop the Packers as we head into the playoffs. And there you have it. I love it, and I hope they're listening. In fact, 
when we go into the game on Saturday, we, we should try to find a way to manipulate the players into thinking that it's already the second half when we start the game so we can <laughs> just start doing better right off the bat. You know, I I know a guy that used to be the announcer for the Packers on the on the field. Like he was the he was the MC like at the stadium. He's a he's a brother of a buddy of mine. I wonder if we could get in touch with him and ask him just to just to go talk to somebody and put on the scoreboard that they're in the third quarter in the first quarter. Just they just look up and say, "Oh, it's third quarter. It's time to do that." That would be yeah. that'd be fun. Uh, so, I, what I, about you, Wayne? Are you, I know it's Christmas Day, normally a, a day for family and presents and meals and stuff. Are you going to be able to watch the game live, or I'm definitely going to be watching the game live. Okay, we're going to you know do some family stuff. People are going to come over in the morning. We'll uh, do some gifts, maybe even have some eggnog and have some I food. Love eggnog. But uh, we will definitely be watching the game. It'll be 1.30 p.m. here in California. About a perfect time, because by the time that's over, then we can start thinking about Christmas dinner. But uh, but first, Packers football. How yeah, about same you? here. Uh, my uh, my uh, wife and her family are all avid Packers fans, and uh, especially my father-in-law, who, as you know, he and his 32 32- <laughs> um, fantasy football teams. Uh, the football is his life. So thankfully, I, I have uh, married into a family that adores football and keeps uh, doing football. So that becomes the priority. So we plan everything around the Packers game. So I'm very thankful for that. So uh, and plus the the Madden special is like the hour before the game starts. Right. I don't know if you you know. And my wife is really excited to see that because you know we all grew up with Madden as an announcer. I wasn't. I'm not old enough to have seen him coach. But, uh, you know, love him or hate him, you, you still got to just respect the guy for what he did. Um, I, I love John Madden. I thought he was I, – I miss him announcing. I really do. Yeah, so, me, me too. To I, I did see him coaching some near the end of his career. And then, of course, all the commercials, I believe, Tough Acton, Tin Acton, and Boom. possibly even – yes, Ace Hardware as well, I believe. And then, of yep. course, out came Madden video games and, well – Nowadays, there's a lot of people that love the video game that had no idea I was a real person. Yeah. He really coached. Yeah. He really announced. <laughs> exactly. I mean, even in my day, people didn't know he was a coach. They just thought he was, he was in, they had a Madden because he was an announcer. No, he used to coach. Pretty big deal back in his day. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, moving on to our game score predictions this past week, my prediction of the score was Packers 30, Ravens 27. Uh, and Wayne, your prediction was Packers 28, Ravens 24. This one came down to the wire for us because if, uh, the Ravens hadn't scored at the end to make the, make the game 31 to 30, uh, I would have been out of luck, but thankfully my differential was only four points. Your differential was nine points. So I get another win in the W column. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, st- I still got a chance, man. Still yeah. got a chance. You're putting together quite a rally at the end of the season. It's, I know. Uh, I've got six correct. You have five, three games to go. Let's see what happens. Uh, three games plus the postseason. How do you see this coming Saturday's game? Uh, I'm going to say Packers are going to win, but I think it's going to be pretty close. Uh, Packers 28, Browns 20. I think that especially since they lost tonight, they are going to have a fire under their, under them that is going to make them want to get back into this. And I'm assuming that Baker Mayfield is going to be back playing next week, which will put them in a better position. So they're going to, they're going to be very hungry for the win, but at the end of the day, Packers are still going to come on top. You very close to the same. I mean, I would not be surprised if we win 38 to 10, but to be on the safe side, since I do believe Baker will be back uh, Packers, 29 Browns, 18. Hmm. All right. Oh, it's one of those things, it's the same thing with fantasy football, where I don't want to cheer for the other team to score. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, <laughs> Because right. when Baltimore scored that last touchdown, I was like, all right, well, I, I got this game at least, you know, but I, I didn't cheer. Don't get me wrong, because I was very nervous at that point, but uh, thankfully it turned out in our favor. Yes, thankfully indeed. And so in the NFC North at this point, the NFC North champion Green Bay Packers are 11-3. and three. The Vikings are six and seven, and the Bra- the Bears are four and nine. They play each other in about ten minutes, so we don't know what's going to happen to there. I'm kind of rooting for a zero zero tie, or as Roy <laughs> Kent would say, nil nil. And the Lions they won, woohoo! 
Woo! They are now two, 11 and one. And yeah, the COVID things have been wreck, wrecking havoc on the scheduling this week. Like we talked about, the Browns were moved to today. And then we've got two games tomorrow on Tuesday. And then, of course, the regularly scheduled games for the next week of football will be on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we, we've got a lot of football. It's hard to keep track of it all. Yeah, it's it's a nightmare for fantasy football, too, because I'm so used to just relying on Thursday, Sunday, and Monday, and now it's like all week. I feel like I'm managing a, a fantasy baseball team instead, and I don't like it. But uh, unfortunately, I'm out on all three of my leagues. I've officially lost, so uh, it's a bummer, but uh, there you get, there you have it. Anyway, some other interesting news in the NFL this week. The first five players for the 2022 Pro Bowl have been announced. Uh, those five players are Tom Brady, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, Jonathan Taylor, and Travis Kelsey. Obviously, there's more to come, but uh, those are the first five that have been revealed today. Unfortunately, no Packers there, but uh, some very well-deserved names on that list for sure. Moving on, I would like to remind everybody of my other podcast that I do uh, host, which is The Gaming Outsider. It's all about video games, which is one of my favorite things in the world to do. And this week, we are taking characters from different franchises and putting them together in a single game as sort of a wish fulfillment for games that don't actually exist. So uh, mm. the example I put on when I posted it on there is uh, there's a game, you know, obviously you know who Mario is, and there's a game called Rabbids from, uh, uh, from Ubisoft. And a few years ago, they put those two franchises together, which was a big deal. So we wanted to see like what, uh, what franchises would you like to see in the game. Uh, I also played a new game on Xbox called The Gunk, which is a goofy sounding name, but I am thoroughly enjoying that game. And uh, there's going to be plenty more Halo and Guardians of the Galaxy talk as well. If you'd like to check that out, please do so. The same place you listen to this fine show, or you can go to our website, thegamingoutsider.com. As always, we follow the value for value model here over at Packers Fan Podcast, and we do so with Patreon. It is a place where you can help financially support the Packers Fan Podcast, and details for that can be found at patreon.com forward slash Packers Fan Podcast, and we do greatly appreciate any help that you do give us over there. First off, Dan Dyler, thank you, and Go Pack goes for your Jim Ringo level patronage. We really do appreciate it. And Bryant, thanks yet again for your Willie Wood level support, and Go Pack Go. Some more Go Pack Go and thank yous go to Jay Walters, who is supporting the podcast at the AR-12 level. Thank you so much, man. And thank yous, ho-ho-hos, and Go Pack Goes for you awesome folks supporting at the Brett Favre level. Miguel Ramirez, the Opposites Attract podcast. Lawrence Harvey, Jeff Summerfield, Andre in LA, Colin Nolan in Ireland, and Scott Bores. And how about you Curly Lambo level patrons? Go Pack Go and thank you, Beth Mintick, Matt Haig, Joe Christensen, and Hank Davis from the TPE Network of Podcasts. Thanks again for your support. If you're interested in becoming a patron of the PFP, check out the details at patreon.com slash Packers Fan Podcast. And quick reminder, the unofficial Packers Fan Podcast is not affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers, but we do want you to follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. And this Christmas Day, you might be around some people you haven't seen in a little while. Tell them all about the Packers Fan Podcast. It's the show by and for fans of your 13-time NFL champion, Green Bay Packers. And as a reminder, you can also follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Packers Fan Podcast. Or if you'd like to follow me personally, my handle is at GoCastScott. And Wayne's is at Wayne Henderson. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We really do appreciate it. And now it's time for Patreon supporter Dan Dyler to keep us amped up this holiday week. Hey Packers fan podcast listeners, this is your cheesehead from Indianapolis, Dan, and I have two, just two words for you. Go, 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 go,